JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 6th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will uh, leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the financial world turned back uh, to risk-off mode uh, yesterday and today during the Asian morning or renewed fears that the coronavirus will hit global economic growth much more than previously anticipated. Following the rate cuts by the RBA, the Fed and the Bank of uh, Canada, more banks are expected to take action with the Fed anticipated to proceed with another bolt action at its upcoming meeting later this month. Now in Vienna, OPEC members decided to deepen production cuts by 1.5 million barrels per day, but Russia and Kazakhstan said that they have not agreed yet. As for today, we get the US and Canadian employment reports for February, while during the Asian morning uh, tomorrow, we will uh, get uh, China's trade data for the same month. We also have five speakers on our agenda. But we will see everything in more detail just right now. As always, let's start with the performance of the greenback. The dollar traded lower against most of the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It gained only against NOC, the Aussie and the Canadian dollar, uh, while it underperformed uh, the most versus the yen, the Swiss franc and the euro. And this suggests that we are back, we are back in risk-off mode, something clearly evident by the massive strengthening of the safe havens yen and franc, as well as uh, by the relative weakening of the risk-linked currencies, uh, the Aussie, the Kiwi and the Canadian dollar. The strengthening of the euro also supports that. Uh, you remember that we recently have been repeating uh, that uh, the euro may have been also used uh, as a vehicle for carry trades due to eurozone's negative interest rates and at times when investors are wind such trades it gets benefited. The exception here is the US dollar which has taken off its sa safe haven suit perhaps on elevated expectations that um, that uh, the Fed's double cut delivered this week will be accompanied by more. Now, according to the Fed Fat Futures, another 50 basis points uh, decrease is nearly fully priced in for the next gathering, while US Treasury yields continue tumbling with the 10 year rate hitting new a new record low and the two year one falling to its lowest in more than three years. Here we can see the yields of the Fed Fund Futures, and here we see the further decline in the inverted US Treasury yield curve. Now you can see here that uh, in April uh, the rates the rates in the US are expected to be lower by another 50 basis points, which supports the view that uh, uh, later this month uh, the FOMC may cut by another. Uh, 50 basis points. Okay, the meeting scheduled in April is is uh, in April, the April meeting is scheduled for the end of the month. So if the market sees um, sees interest rates at at the, uh, at this point uh, during April, it means that they may have to be cut at the end of uh, March. Now, shifting our gaze to the equity market, we see a sea of red. Major EU indices fell by more than 1.5%, with Spain's 
IBEX35 taking the lead in this tumbling race, losing 2.55%. Uh, the risk aversion accelerated during the US session with all three of Wall Street's main indices falling more than 3%. As for, as for today, in Asia, Japan's Nikkei and China's Shanghai Composite closed 2.72 and 1.21% down respectively. Uh, for the upteenth time, the driver was concerns over the coronavirus's damaging impact on the global economy. Although new infections have slowed in China, the situation elsewhere appears to be out of control, with the virus in Europe, Britain and uh, North America spreading at a, crazy rate, at a crazy pace. Overall, both infected cases and uh, deaths entered acceleration mode yesterday. You can see the usual graphs I'm posting almost uh, every day here. Above zero, we have acceleration. Below zero, we have a slowdown. Uh, so, both cases and deaths entered acceleration mode with uh, cases surging to 98,407 and the death toll climbing to 3,385. All this uh, adds uh, more credence to our view that uh, with uh, no vaccine in the horizon and with the virus still spreading fast, the damage may not be uh, that temporary as many initially believed. We stick to our guns that, uh, that uh, the interest rates uh, cuts by themselves may not be enough to revive growth and that the economic goods could well drag into the second quarter. Even if central banks are willing to ease further with the uncertainty over whether the, the virus can be contained or not, we see it hard for consumers and businesses opting for cheap loans and start spending. Therefore, we believe that there is still room for equities and risk-linked assets to slide further as investors divert flows to safe havens. As we, know, as we noted several times in the past, currency pairs that can act as a as a gauge of investor morale are those consisting of a commodity linked uh, of a commodity linked currency like uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi and a safe haven like the yen and the franc this time around the euro could work too um, in other words uh, we see the case for pairs like Aussie yen Kiwi yen Aussie franc Kiwi franc to continue tumbling while euro Aussie and euro Kiwi may continue climbing north The Canadian dollar could also stay under selling interest, but we would like to stay away from it uh, for now until OPEC and its allies arrive to a final and official decision over whether they will cut production further, and if so, by how much. Yesterday, OPEC members agreed for output to be cut by an extra 1.5 million barrels per day until the end of this year, with non-OPEC producers uh, contributing the one-third. Nevertheless, Russia and Kazakhstan said that they have not agreed yet to, to such a proposal, something that raised worries with regards to a final accord. Both Brent and WTI slid 1.92 and 1.18% respectively on those concerns. The non-OPEC uh, members will join OPEC today and it would, it would be interesting to hear what the final communique will include. If no consensus is found, oil prices are likely to accelerate their downtrend, dragging the loony down with them. On the other hand, if non-OPEC producers eventually decide uh, to compromise, both crude prices and the Canadian dollar are likely to rebound. That said, with fears surrounding the effects of the coronavirus to the global economy still elevated, we are reluctant to call for a reversal. Maybe we could get a decent correction. Now, as for today, Apart, apart from headlines and developments surrounding the coronavirus and the OPEC Plus meeting, investors may also pay attention to the U.S. employment data for February. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have increased 175K, less than January's 225K, while the unemployment rate is now forecast to have held steady at 3.6%, just a tick above its 50-year low of 3.5%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have accelerated to 0.3% month over month from 0.2%, something that barring any deviations to the prior monthly prints will drive the year-over-year -year rate up to 3.2% from 3.1%. Overall, uh, the forecasts uh, point to a decent report. 
consistent of uh, consistent with further tightening in the U.S. Uh, labor market under normal circumstances. Accelerating wages would have raised speculation of higher inflation in the months to come and allow Fed officials to keep their hands off the cut button. However, after, after Tuesday's double cut, Fed Chair Powell highlighted that the fundamentals of the U.S. economy remain strong, adding that they decided to cut due to the risks uh, due to the risks uh, the coronavirus poses to the economic activity thus this time uh, around uh, the employment report may not be so determinant as uh, before with regards to the fed's uh, future course course of action the dollar may strengthen somewhat or solid numbers but with the virus keep spreading at a fast pace we will treat such a rebound as a corrective move with the fed having much more room to cut than other central banks, the dollar is likely to, res to resume its uh, latest downtrend. Yes, the ECB is expected to cut as well, but only by 10 uh, basis points. This is the smallest percentage expected to be cut among, uh, among major central banks, and this may have been another reason why the euro is flying. The conclusion here is that we see ample room for euro dollar to continue drifting north, even if it corrects lower in the aftermath of uh, the data. Now, as for the rest of today's events, apart uh, from the U.S. employment report, we get uh, jobs data from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is expected to have ticked back up to 5.6% from 55 while the net change in employment is anticipated to show that the economy gained less jobs than it did in January. Specifically, it is expected to show an increase of 10K jobs, less than the prior print of 34.5K. Uh, Following the double cut by the Bank of Canada on Wednesday, a soft employment report is likely to keep the door for more easing wide open. As for tonight, during the Asian morning Saturday, uh, China's trade balance for February is coming out. Both exports and imports are expected to have slumped 8.4% year-over-year and 9% year-over-year respectively, after rising 7.9% and 16.5% in January. This may result in a shrinking surplus of uh, 12.75 billion US dollars from 47.21 billion. Um, the outbreak of the coronavirus started in China, the authorities of which ha have adopted restrictive measures in their attempt to contain the virus, something that is expected to have hurt businesses and thereby exports and uh, imports. So even if we see uh, larger slides, we, this will not come as a, as a surprise to us. In any case, bigger declines may increase concerns that the virus's economic effects are larger than previously anticipated and may result in another round of risk aversion at the start of uh, next week. We also have uh, five Fed speakers on today's agenda. Chicago Fed President Charles Evans, Cleveland President Loretta Mester, St. Louis President James Bullard, New York President John Williams, and Boston President Eric Rosengren. It will be interesting to hear what they have to say about the FOMC's policy plans. Uh, are, are they indeed considering to lower rates uh, further? And if yes, by how much? So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great day, a great weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye from me, and have a great day, and have a great weekend. JFT, just fair and direct.